being said, we printed it out so that you all know what the legislation actually says. Uh, so bear with me while I read to you all. <laughs> Hopefully you don't fall asleep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes, it's too important to fall asleep. That's an awesome point. Section 1, Title 41, Chapter 9, Article 3, Arizona Revised Statutes is amended by adding Section 41 to 1444 to read, Privacy, Public Place, Public Accommodation, State Preemption Definitions. A. The regulation of access to privacy areas and places of public accommodation based on gender identity or expression is of statewide concern and is not subject to further regulation by any county, city, or town other political subdivision of the state. Subpoint B. A county, city, town, or other political subdivision of the state shall not enact or enforce an ordinance or policy that requires a person or business to regulate access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint C. No person or business shall be civilly or criminally liable for denying access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint D. This section does not prohibit a person or business from allowing access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression. Subpoint E. Any ordinance or policy that relates to access to privacy areas based on gender identity or expression that is inconsistent with this section is void and of no force or effect. Subpoint F. For the purposes of this section, gender identity or expression means either A. An individual's self-identification as male, female, or something in between and includes an individual's appearance, mannerisms, or characteristics only insofar as they relate to gender with or without regard to the individual's designated sex at birth. B. Any other substantially self or similar self-identification of gender. Subpoint 2. Privacy areas means in places of public accommodation where access is restricted based on sex, including a public restroom, bathroom, shower, bath, dressing room, or locker room. Section 2, emergency. This act is an emergency measure that is necessary to preserve the public peace, health, or safety and is operative immediately as provided by law. Does that sound like it's in retaliation to anything, by chance? Maybe. Maybe, just a little, just a tiny bit, maybe in retaliation to the human relations ordinance that Phoenix passed not too long ago. Um, so this is an emergency measure. It's about protecting people. It's about protecting cisgender women and children. But the reality is, is it doesn't protect people. It only in further puts people in harm's way. Who here knows what Transgender Day of Remembrance is? Awesome. For the people who might be watching who don't know what Transgender Day of Remembrance is, it's the day that we honor the people who were murdered for being trans for no other reason in the last year alone. Because that's how substantial the harm that we receive from people who are not trans is. That being said, one in every 30 or one person who is trans is murdered every 36 hours. That's a lot of people. And this only encourages that more people bring harm to us. The reality is, is we're not the ones hurting people who aren't trans. We're not the ones attempting to criminalize them because, you know, SB 1432 didn't make it, but it was still an attempt. We're not the ones trying to do those things. It's people who are not like us, people who think that they are better than us for no reason, who are doing these things. The reality is, is that this bill isn't just affecting trans people. It targets trans people, but it doesn't only affect trans people. It affects everyone who looks quote unquote different. This could be the cancer patient who doesn't have any hair. This could be the metalhead who has long hair. <laughs> this could be the person with a lot of piercings. It's not just trans people who have gender identities. It's not just trans people who express their gender. We all do. We express our gender by the way that we walk. We express our gender by the way that we talk. We express our gender by the clothes that we wear or do not wear. This is the language by which we show ourselves to the world. And so and the reality is, is my right to expression includes gender expression, does it not? 
Yes. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of I happiness is very that. difficult if you are not allowed to pee anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it is very difficult. <laughs> my right to privacy does not stop at what is behind my clothes. My right to privacy does not stop at my personal documents, which is none of the business of the people who own businesses at the restrooms I use. And anyway, and Nicholas Love brought up a wonderful point and he, he said he was writing an essay. I don't mean to steal your idea. Um, <laughs> I don't, oh, you're behind me. And he said, who knows what's underneath that skirt on the bathroom door anyway? <laughs> Has anyone asked the girl on that sign? <laughs> Nobody's asked her. There's this assumption that you must be not trans until you are outed as trans. And that is not true. We walk among you, people who aren't trans, and some of us look different than what you expect. <laughs> and we love it, and we are proud, and that is okay. So that being said, I'm gonna have some people come up and share their experiences. Some experiences are of parents, of artists, of people that you wouldn't expect to be trans, myself included. Um, most people, when I walk into a bathroom, don't think, oh, well, that guy has feet mail on his birth certificate. Most people, when I out myself as trans, think, really? Because when most people think of trans people, they think of drag queens. And most people don't realize that people like me exist. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna welcome up Nicholas Love. He's an awesome trans advocate and he's gonna share his experience with you all. If you could bring your attention to Nicholas, please. Hi everyone. Hello. Trans talking. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Nicholas Love and I'm here today to talk to you about how 1040 will affect me. 1040 is not about the bathroom. 1040 is about dignity, it's about respect, it's about the ability to have human rights. It's 1045. What I change? 1045. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's really stressful. 1045 is not about bathrooms, it's about dignity, respect, it's human rights. It's about discrimination, it's about hate based on ignorance and fear. This bill will impact many people's life. This is not a bill against transgender people. That may be who they're aiming for, but that is not who they're going to affect. They're going to affect every single person who does not fit into what our society believes is the binary approach to gender. It will affect everyone. It will affect me as a transgender person, but it will affect my child. It will affect my wife. It affects every one of us who have family, who care about anyone. It is about how you express yourself. It is about your characteristics, your mannerism. That is how they are talking about this. So today they say you look too feminine to pee in the men's bathroom. You look too masculine to pee in the women's bathroom. What are they gonna say we look like tomorrow? Who are they gonna talk to about tomorrow? This impacts all of us, all of us, every human being has a gender expression and identity. This is not about protecting our wives and our children from predators in the bathroom. There are laws for that already. This is about protecting people. And you do not want me in the women's bathroom. If I walk into the women's bathroom, I'm gonna scare the hell out of a lot of little old ladies. And I'm gonna endanger my life. Bathrooms are scary enough when you're transgender. There is a fear every time you feel that tingle that you gotta pee of where can I go? And who is gonna follow me in? And more importantly, who's gonna follow me out and kill me? As Ira talked about, we are being killed because of how people think we should be. We in this country are protecting sexual orientation at a wonderful rate, and I thank you for that. But people are not discriminated against mostly, and not killed mostly because of orientation. It's about their gender expression, is what people believe another person is, or what they do. And no one knows what is under our clothes, nor should they. There is nothing about us that makes us any different than any other human being. When you are born in the United States, they do a very detailed examination, very scientific or medical thing. They open your legs and they say, yes, no, pink, blue, and you go live your life accordingly. I am not that documentation. 
We are not that documentation based on that examination. We are people. There are people everywhere who do not fit into this binary approach of man and woman. One in 100 individuals are born where you don't have 100% male or 100% female going on in your genitals. And we don't know this about each other. Why? Because we don't give a damn. We just want to pee. We just want to be able to go into a locker room and work out. We just want to be able to raise our families and take care of our lives. But no, we have to stand outside in this hot weather and give a crap about pee. Today, in 2013, we care about where you pee? That's bullshit. We have time and money to waste on this? No. This is about dignity, respect. We have money that we need to take care of families, our health care, our immigrants. We cannot waste time on this anymore. And if you don't think this applies to you because you're not transgender, you're wrong. It applies to every human being because every human being has a gender expression and the right to express it as they choose. So I hope that anyone who's listening to this will act and will protect themselves and us. And we all need to unite and not just come out when there's a moment of hate, but protect each other every time we can. We need to stay safe and strong together. We need to be able to protect our families. We need to be able to be there and be part of the society. We are human beings and we deserve that respect. Thank you. I identify generally within like the group of trans asterisks being like my gender expression and sex don't necessarily match, but that I primarily identify with my sex assignment at birth. Uh, some degree. Uh, I think it's really important that people who are not LGBTQ understand that these issues affect them because as we do things like create sex segregated spaces and allow further and further policing of such spaces, they carry with them in their concreteness, building rigid boundaries about, about what everyone can say and do. It's not just a, an LGBTQ issue. It's a really important, really big issue that affects everyone. I wanted to kind of reiterate that because a lot of people have been saying that and I think that's one of the most important pieces of this puzzle of how crazy all this is. Anyway, I'm going to read something and hide behind my notebook now. <laughs> I stood feeling fluid. Water washed over my hands, taking with it the shit that happens in public restrooms. When a woman hit me with her purse, I turned barely able to register her words above the shockwaves that shook my foundational reality. This is the woman's restroom. There is no room for rest for those of us who have to fear such audacity. She eyed my chest, continuing on her way, unashamed, all but her feet disappearing inside a blue stall. Those feet still stick in my mind like dirty bathroom floors. She still stalls progress. That was a decade ago. SB 1432, we count down the ways progress sometimes goes in reverse order. Spacing out logic that is out of this world, forcing us to be alien, alienated from public spaces. We need to keep men out of women's bathrooms for their protection. Hashtag safety tips for ladies. Posting signs that clearly mark a bathroom as women only, as women only activates a force field, effectively keeping out all would-be rapists. This is not necessarily about safety. It is about civil rights. It is about making sense of the world around us and how when someone's existence does not make sense to the rest of us, how do we reconstruct a reality to reflect what we want, like made up women's faces being mirrored over and over, images burnt into our retinas through repetition. We learn to unravel like toilet paper, to be used up and flushed away. Well, I am flushed with rage into swirling action around these spaces because despite what signs on doors say, restrooms hold space for the fluid of society. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello, my name is Sean Michael Geddes, and I'm a man who happens to be transgender. Um, or for those of you who don't know what that means, when the doctor handed me over to my mom, he said, it's a girl, but look at me now. He was wrong. <laughs> it may have taken a long time to get here, but this is who I am and how I have been presenting myself for the last decade. 
Last week, Representative Kavanaugh said um, that all transgender people should be in jail. <laughs> well, we won that battle. <laughs> this week, he says that we should just be degraded and humiliated when trying to use the public restroom. What? Maybe next week he will actually get to know one of us. I'm free for coffee. <laughs> Let's get real here. This bill is unnecessary legislation. <coughs> no problem exists. It's not fixing anything. There are no cases of transgender people causing problems in private spaces. There are cases of people attacking transgender people. So this law instead legislates bullying and makes it legal to harass people who are already on the fringes of our society, who are already marginalized. By using the term gender expression in the new wording of the bill, he's opened up a whole kettle that I don't think he understands. This law doesn't just apply to a few of us anymore. Everyone has a gender expression. It's in the way you wear your hair, the clothes you choose to wear. It's in the way you walk and the way you act. And this bill opens it up so that anyone in any place that's a private space in public places can discriminate. It's legalized discrimination, plain and simple. I'm especially concerned about the communities who cross over different boundaries and different barriers, who have more than one thing already against them. The deaf, people with disabilities, people of color, people experiencing homelessness, the youth. These people already have people looking at them when they go places, when they enter restrooms. This kind of law just makes it worse. We've already seen a rise in hate crimes against our youth, just since this bill was put out there. Kavanaugh claims this is about physical anatomy, but that's not actually in the <coughs> bill anywhere. It says gender identity and expression. So please, decide for yourself. Should we have a law that says anyone can be discriminated against at any time? Should we have a law that makes it legal to deny access to private places? Should we have a law that takes away our right to privacy? It's called legalized discrimination and it's wrong. So please call your legislators, write them, tell them how you feel about this law. Because otherwise someone will be able to simply say, I don't like the cut of your chip. No loo for you.
<laughs> just said the same. Fine, I gotta go take care of my son. <laughs> Why they still let me have that right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my brothers, my sisters, and my siblings, we're here because somebody is trying to make it illegal for us to exist. That's not what he wants to say. That's not how he's going to say it. But what he's saying is, you should not be here. Right now, you should be somewhere other than the state of Arizona. There are 26,000 trans people in the state of Arizona. <coughs> That's a lot of people that he's saying shouldn't be allowed to use the restroom, that we should all have our opinions of ourselves invalidated, that our knowledge of who we are and what we are is less important than the opinion of everybody else we engage with. And that's not just for the trans community, that's the whole community of Arizona. That's what he wants to say. He is saying that my being a woman is subject to the decisions and the judgment of somebody else who has 10 to 15 other things to do on any given day. If I walk into a, a McDonald's, the manager at McDonald's has a lot of things that he wants to look at or that she wants to deal with far before she wants to sit there and decide who's going to use which restroom based on how they look. Because that's what gender expression is. It is based on how you look. And I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people don't realize. If you are a black woman in this country, you can often be seen as a man or as masculine. And that's part of your gender expression or identity, whether you want it to be or not. So that means if your face is the wrong shape, <coughs> if your hair is the wrong style, you could be told you can't use either of those because you're too manly to be in the women's restroom and you're too womanly to be in the man's restroom. And so now here you are with your child in tow and you can't even go potty when you're trying to do something driving from one side of the country to the other to start a new life. Following that old maxim, go west, young person. <laughs> okay? This is Arizona. We are a crossroads. We have the ninth busiest airport in the country. Who, it has, who are we going to hire within the TSA to stand out in front of those restrooms and make sure that they're used properly? That's 40.5 million people. That's going to place our safety as air travelers at risk. All because they're afraid of us? Of us? Look at us. We aren't threats to anybody. Heck, if anything else, we're attacked more often than anybody else in this country. 91% harassment rates. 76% bullying rates in schools. We're talking homeless rates that are off the charts. The standard suicide rate within the United States of America is 1.6%. Within the trans community, it's 41%. That's enormous. That's huge. That's what this bill is saying is ha going to happen to us. I've had double the normal number of phone calls I get on a nightly basis from 6 to 10 to 15 to 25 in just five days because of the prior bill. And this one's going to make it even worse. No. No, this is about life and liberty and the pursuit of justice. This triumph of transness we have gathered here, this is all about liberty and justice for all. We're about making sure that this country and this state are equal with each other. We want them to understand that what they're saying is that we're not equal, that these people, that I should not be here. I'm a veteran of the United States Army. I fought for the freedoms that everybody in this country avows. And I've come back to the United States of America and I'm told now that I can't go potty. I'm told now that I can't be a woman. I just fought for the right of people to be women, to be men, to be both and neither. That's what I fought for. And now I'm being told that that, that, that service to my country, that risk to my life and limb, that that is no longer important all because of who I am and what I am. I can't put up with that. That will not stand. That's un -American. That is un-American. That is against everything that Americans and Arizonans stand for. Dita Diaz. That's Arizona. And we're violating that with this law. Chairman Kavanaugh, if you want to know about trans people, come and see me. I am here anytime. I will answer any question. I will help you make better laws for more Arizonans. And what you're telling me is you don't want me here. That's my, thank you very much. Three, one, thank you everyone for coming. That includes all you back there. <laughs> um, and two, if we've learned anything today, we've learned that this isn't just about trans people. This isn't just about the LGBTQ community. This is about humanity. And this is about dignity. Representative Kavanaugh, 
This is not a threat. It is not a promise. It's just a recognition of fact. The LGBTQ community, we're really good at boycotting. We're really good at organizing. And this will have a huge economic impact on our community because we're already organizing lists of businesses that are friendly to us. We're very good at responsible consumerism. We're very good at banding together. And we are very, very good at not giving money to people who discriminate against us with no reason. And there is never, there is never a justifiable reason for discrimination. So, <laughs> that being said, <laughs> if you think that this is about safety, think about your own economic safety. Think about the safety of this state. Think about the safety of the people who use restrooms in general. Think about the safety of people who look different. What is normal anyway? We have a lot of rights in this country. One of those is the right to express ourselves. One of the ways in which we express ourselves is through our gender. One of the ways in which we express ourselves is through the way that we dress, through the way that we walk, through the way that we talk. If it walks like a duck, it's not necessarily a duck, just someone who walks like a duck. <laughs> and that might be my dad. <laughs> and that is okay. And that's not a reason to judge someone. That's not a reason to bully someone. And that's not a reason to make legislation making it okay to bully them. Whether you are a business owner, whether you are a student, or whether you are just someone walking down the road, or if you are in the House of Representatives, period. So, <laughs> no, on SB 1040, um, 1045, sorry, I'm sick, excuse my puberty voice. <laughs> um, Tony is in the back, she's recording stuff, she has an iPad, she has phone, oh, the iPad's right here. We have phone numbers for your legislatures, please call them, please check out paperstopee.org. Everyone has the right to be human. Everyone has the right <laughs> to use our bodily functions because we don't really have a choice. Thank you. <laughs>